want you to tell the story of your Istanbul jersey. From the beginning. Yes. I'm gonna try and sum it up as quickly as possible because it took like three years from start to finish. Like he's not exaggerating either. It took three years. Okay, this one goes back to 2005. I'm 12 and Liverpool have won the biggest thing you can win in club football. And it just so happens that a few months later, I'm going to Liverpool for the first time. The city's still celebrating. I see a jersey signed by the whole team. I need it, I can't afford it. 10 years later, there's a bunch of Liverpool events in Toronto. That jersey's back and over the course of the next year and a bit those events keep having this jersey on silent auction just to taunt me 12 years after seeing it i finally decided to pull the trigger it's for charity it's not as much as it originally cost i have to get it i work out a deal on twitter to have an extra player added the goalkeeper he saved the winning penalty you have to have him a month later my jersey finally comes the goalkeeper's not on it so i send it back and i spend the next year and a bit trying to get a jersey back to me a year later, they have the audacity to send me an email saying, oh, we're doing another run of these jerseys if you want to buy one. I haven't even got the first jersey that I ordered. Time continues and that company goes out of business, starts up as a new company. I'm bounced around to countless different people. Emails are closed down. I'm looking up people on Twitter. I'm trying to find out who the hell I can contact to try and get my shirt that I paid for already. Another month go by and they say, oh, we're just one signature off sending it to you. Yeah, that was the problem in the first place. March, company's full on bankrupt. June of 2019, two years on now, the second company says, oh, we're picking up your jersey this afternoon and we're gonna send it out to you. August, that company goes bankrupt too. It says your best course of action now is to contact your credit card company and get a refund. Statute of limitations is well gone. And that's the point I knew I'm getting this jersey. It is a mission. I am getting this jersey. We are over two years on now. February 2020, Abby's in the hospital getting like literally some kind of nuclear scam going on and I'm doing everything I can. Like literal former Liverpool players are talking to me, giving me advice on who I can contact. I'm getting the number of the guy who owned the first company that went bankrupt and I'm texting him and he's like, how did you get my number? One thing leads to another. I contact another charity in Liverpool and finally he says, out of humanitarian reasons, I'm gonna send you one. I have nothing to do with any of this, but it's been long enough, you deserve it. That package gets lost in the mail because my address is written wrong on it, but finally, over three years after I originally ordered the thing, I get the signed Istanbul jersey. How long have you been waiting for three this? Three years? Well, 15, 20? How long has it been, 15 years? Yeah, because we saw it in uh, August of 2005. Oh, in Wales. Oh my god. If Eric is willing to go that far for a jersey, then I too can devise a plan to go that far to fix my ankle. Hi Mary, I'm wondering how do you get a second opinion from Dr. Judith Baumhauer? Hi Ashley, I'm calling to inquire about getting a second opinion from two of your doctors. Now Dr. the infection John is Campbell gone, and it, it seems to be gone, it's been gone for the last six plus months. But Trying to avoid an ankle fusion so I can preserve optimal mobility by the end of August of last year I was actually fully walking in shoes again. Currently working remotely and our are closed. Hi, Hi Sam, I'm calling to inquire about, about getting, getting a second, second opinion, opinion from Dr. Dr. Saltzman Coughlin about my complex, about my ankle, complex injury. ankle injury. Hi, 
Hi, Beverly. I'm calling to inquire about getting Hi. a second my name is Evie Yanakitis. I'm a 26-year-old female from... Y-A-N-N-A... I'm from Canada. Does does the doctor do second opinions to out of country? Mom, so first of all, do you not have facts? Do I know how to fax? Yeah. Put on the glass, you put in the phone number, press fax. Okay, because okay. I need to figure out... So this link is only good for 24 hours? Okay. No, and I'm actually Canadian. I had nine surgeries on it, and I've even gone blind in the process. Could you say over nine surgeries? asking my surgeon how many referrals he can give me and what he needs from me so that he can refer yeah send the referrals yeah. that's it i think so sorry this mailbox is full and cannot accept any more recordings thank you for using the voicemail system goodbye i didn't even use it So as you just saw, I contacted 27 doctors in Canada and the US. Out of the 27 doctors, two doctors in the US are willing to give me their second opinion, one of which is my friend's dad. Six doctors in Canada are willing to give me their second opinion, but in Canada, it works a little differently. In Canada, you need a referral to see another surgeon. So what I need to do is get my current surgeon to sign off and send a referral to six other doctors around Canada so I can even talk to them. The problem is my surgeon is unreachable. As you saw, I called his office and the mailbox was full, so I decided to email his assistant. I've been going back and forth with his assistant since the end of August. Yes, August. Now she's busy, but every time she does respond, she says she doesn't have the answers because she doesn't see the surgeon much. Now. My strategy was to get the referrals for the Canadian doctors and talk with the Canadian doctors to see if there was a solution within Canada before I contact and pay the doctors in the US. Now my plan is super delayed because I can't get a hold of my surgeon. So I'm thinking and I decide to call the fracture clinic at the hospital so I can talk to my surgeon. They say I can't make an appointment but that my surgeon's office will call me. So I'm all hopeful, thinking I'm gonna get a call in the next 20 minutes. 20 minutes goes by, don't get a call. Maybe by the end of the day, by 5 p.m., I don't get a call. The next day, I don't get a call. A week later, I don't get a call. Two weeks later, I don't get a call. I didn't follow up sooner because I felt like I was being too naggy. I don't know, I just, I don't want him to not pay attention to my case, that's all, and I, and I don't wanna delay this even further. So I didn't, I didn't follow up sooner. However, two weeks later, I did get an email from his assistant and she was so sorry that she hadn't contacted me earlier. She still didn't have the answers that I needed from him because his schedule has changed. So she doesn't see him much, like she said in the previous emails. But this time she scheduled an appointment for me to see him at his office. The only problem is the appointment is in the middle of December. December. I believe everything happens for a reason, but what the fuck?